Oh, I should probably check to make sure. Hey, made sure. Might as well make sure those speakers oh, are the. Oh, did you make sure it's plugged in? It is. That's why when I tapped it, it made it a little. Ah, uh, good. So. <laughs> All right, so Hammy, what are we doing? Today, let's see. Stay Not just up today. Late. <laughs> Not just today. What are we doing this week? In the days leading up to the 23rd of April, 2018. We're watching um, Avenger movies? Hypothetically. Hypothetically. Hypothetically, we'd, we might be watching all the movies leading up to Infinity War. Yes. To edu edu educate ourselves. Educate ourselves so that whenever Infinity War comes out, we will see it. We're going to get the best review we have ever done. <laughs> and it's going to be fantastic. We'll be more well informed in the Marvel universe. So Lizzie doesn't say universe. all the DC characters. <laughs> yeah, we'll I'll have, probably still say it. There was something recently, I can't remember what it was, but yeah, you missed it. Oh, part of me wanted to be like, let's do Iron Man, then we'll do Captain America, then we'll do Thor, and then we'll do Batman. <laughs> Batman's a good movie, though. Batman's a good movie. Like and, I, I and don't actually, like a lot of the movies. I'm gonna give him a chance now that I'm older. Yeah, I guess. See I'm if gonna, I like him. Probably call this Iron Man one discussion. Yeah. Pat, or, um, colon, the road to no, Infinity War. No, 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 War. no, no. Col that's too long. Semicolon. Just call it the countdown. The countdown to Infinity a War. Yeah. Colon, Infinity Lizzie War. and Zach versus Iron Man one. <laughs> hashtag subscribe. Mm, nice <laughs> you forgot to shave. I did forget to shave. It's oh, okay then. Um, so yeah, we're going to watch all the Marvel movies, as many as we own, leading up to the 23rd, and we're going to just kind of give our thoughts. Lizzie's never been a huge fan of the superhero movies. I was a huge fan of Marvel movies until mm -hmm. recently. I just kind of fell off. I, we haven't seen half of the new ones. Yeah. So a couple of these will be, you know, ones we've seen before, but definitely haven't seen them in a long time. So. Are we going to try to see Black Panther? I don't know how we would, yeah. unless we torrent it offline, which we're not going to do. But... I don't know how we would see it unless it's, is it, if it's still in the theaters. Maybe we can do it out of order. I mean, it might be online digitally to buy. If it is, we'll pay for it. But yeah, so we'll be doing all these videos, the Marvel movies, up until Infinity War, hypothetically, unless something happens and we get booked. Or we just we don't know the order <laughs> or something. <laughs> we'll do you have a list on Wikipedia? There, there's or one on Wikipedia. Oh, okay. So yeah, Iron Man one. We watched it. This was the very first, as far as I can remember, I didn't look it up, so I mean, this all might be incorrect, but as far as I remember, Iron Man 1 was the very first Marvel movie with the purpose, like the, the thought in mind that this was going to lead to Avengers. Mm. So it was meant to be like, you know, if this one failed, we weren't going to get anything else really after that. I mean, there's probably a couple more movies after that, but luckily, Iron Man 1, they had solid casting, yeah. solid direction, and it came out great. Yeah. We just watched it. What did you think, Lizzie? It was good. I liked it. Um, it began really dark. Yeah. It was very anime-ish. Well, I mean, yeah, United superhero. States soldiers getting shot in the middle of... I'm assuming yeah. I don't know. And then just being held captive with heart surgery going on. Yeah, it was pretty dark. Yeah, I, I told Lizzie, it seemed like, you know, whenever you get those close-up shots of Tony Stark's, you know, chest and where the, you know, really weird arc reactor thing is implanted yeah. in him, that's kind of body horror. And the way that they kind of showed it was like it was kind of creepy. I mean, he's got this thing lodged in his chest, and it's attached to a car battery, yeah. and it's keeping shrapnel from reaching his heart. It's it's pretty creepy. And actually, I gotta say, this is definitely we'll probably start noticing things as the movies go on, and as yeah. we start getting deeper and deeper and closer to you know 2018 and their movies. But I don't know. This, this one definitely felt tonally a little bit darker. Yeah. Um. And a little bit less comic book. For the movie that started the whole comic book and superhero genre. I mean, I think comics were darker. Iron Man, I don't think really was. I mean, he was an alcoholic, but that's about as far as Iron Man ever went in the comics. Mm, I don't know. I Correct really... me if I'm wrong. I really don't know that much, but let me know I, in the comments. I don't know. I read, a, I read a few different... I didn't read the comics, but I read reviews and different things, and it seemed like there was a dark... Um, dark kind of history. Like, comics were meant to support certain things, certain... Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I but researched Iron Man 1 this was, a long time ago. I mean, it was a little dark. Yeah. But it was fun, though. That was funny. Um, I mean, I don't, know, I don't know how much it subverted, you know, what superhero movies were at the time, but it mm -hmm. did wait until the very end of the movie to say the name of the superhero, which you gotta respect, because a lot of times they'll come in there and Batman will be named in the first, like, five minutes. Yeah, he'll be like, I'm Batman. I'm Batman. <laughs> but no, 
they restrain themselves. Um, it was pretty dark though. I mean, you're talking about a weapons manufacturer that you know supposedly sells primarily to the United States. And his his boss. I mean his, his partner. Partner. His dad's sorry. partner. His dad's partner. You know to find out him. that you know not just betraying him, betraying the country. Yeah. I mean, he was selling weapons to terrorist sex. You know, it was kind of, it's kind of dark it's kind of yeah. you know it's like the beginning the beginning of the movie like, like the idea of a weapons manufacturer that gets captured and finds out that his weapons are being sold both to americans and to america's enemies that sounds like the, the um plot for an oscar bait kind of movie it just so happens that it turned out to be the plot leading into a superhero movie yeah so yeah it reminded me a bit of archer somehow like yeah i mean he's very archer or, or be, more better to say, Archer is very Tony Stark. Okay. But, yeah. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. was great in this. He had a couple of scenes he really had to act his ass off in. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was Jeff Bridges as Obadiah Stane. He did a really good job. Some solid menacing line readings. Yeah. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow played Pepper Potts. She was really good. And don't you love... I mean, it's been all these years. I don't know if you remember, but I do because, like I said, I was a Marvel fanboy for a while. Mm-hmm. Um... Terrence Howard, seeing him as, um, what is the guy's name? Tony's friend in the army, the guy that's in charge I, of um, military don't... research. Names but anyway, are bad. <laughs> yeah, the guy, I'm bad he, with names. His buddy, Terrence Howard, he got, he was in one movie. Yeah. And then he was immediately replaced. Spoilers. Oh. Spoilers to you, too. I guess that's you, sad. I liked him. Yeah, I did like him, too, but he had some issues with Marvel. I think that he wanted more money. Yeah, actually, if that was it, he wanted more money. I thought he did, uh, he, I thought he did the first two, and then he complained or something. Mm-hmm. No? He did one. Because mm-hmm. then Don Cheadle was hired in to come and be... Well... What am I, what, why am I blanking his name? If you, if you remember his name, let us know in the comments as well. Yeah. Because I really don't remember <laughs> the Can't name of the character. looking it up later. Yeah, and it took me two seconds to look it up, but one hand is... Currently holding the camera. Yes. Until we get a new tripod. Until we get a new tripod. But yeah, so (laughs) Iron Man One. It was meant to set up all the Avengers stuff. Yeah. We saw the end credits thing where we finally get to see Nick Fury comes in and he says that you know Tony, you think you're big stuff because you're saying to the world that you're Iron Man, but you're just a small part in the big grand scheme of things. And Nick Fury was introduced, played by Samuel L. Jackson. And he's coming in to talk to him about the Avengers Initiative, which for the next couple movies we're going to start seeing yes. little hints leading up to that. Yeah, I mean, this was kind of a groundbreaking movie back in the day because I don't think up till this movie and then Captain America, Thor, everything else leading up to Avengers 1, there was, it was pretty unprecedented to have tentpole blockbusters leading into one major film where each you know big name actor that was hired for each role yeah. was gonna have to share the spotlight with the big name actor from the last movie and the movie before that yeah I liked this one you know it was more definitely more raw on the less CG effects which yeah. you know I feel I like CG yeah. but I don't like that much actually I did notice that too I was like oh there's actual glass breaking a thousand different times there's no um, I don't know what they did for one of the, for a few of the flying things, but yeah. a few of the flying things look like they, like, Practical. at least got some shots, and maybe, in, I don't know. Yeah, no, I think when Tony was in his workshop testing out, um, the fly thing, I think they had him on wires, which is, you know. Yeah. Um, it looks better than green screen. But, yeah, no, actually, I, I was thinking about that when I was watching this, too. It took, like, 40 minutes before we actually got... I think like like a lot of CG because the Iron Man suit obviously is CG. Anytime it's flying is CG. Yeah. But everything that happened in the caves and I'm just gonna say Iraq because I really don't know where Tony was there. But anything yeah. that happened, you know, from the car ride where he gets captured to the flashback that shows him, you know, being a playboy and being Tony Stark to everything that happens in the cave and then finally being rescued. I think as soon as he takes off um, from the big explosion that he thinks blows up all the terrorists. Mm-hmm. As soon as he takes off, that's CG when he's flying through the air and crashes in the desert. But even after that, it's all very restrained to yeah. a degree. You know, it, it doesn't feel, I want to say kitsch, it doesn't feel very superhero y at first. Yeah. You know? It just feels like a, like a weapons dealer has to escape from terrorists that are being supplied yeah, with his own company's like, weapons. Sorry, it feels like um, a fight for life. 
which, you know, I was... I told him as soon as he got caught, I was like, I know I haven't seen the movie, but what I would have done was try to figure out how to destroy all the weapons. And that's what he did. And that's what he did. Blew them all up. Smart guy. Wasn't it Jensen is the name of the doctor that was helping him in the caves? Yeah. I was sad. That was a good one. But that, that was, that was I, a I solid... I liked his line. That I was liked, a solid little arc that they yeah. had with him. Jensen was a fun he character. He was just like, my family's already dead. You gotta die too. That's how I can this be is, reunited. This is how me. I can be reunited. So, you know, he stayed alive so much longer. All in all, though, we were talking before... Cause like they, they have the scene where Tony gets captured, but then we have the flashbacks where we see Tony being himself. And he's kind of an asshole to everyone. Yeah. And, you know, it really is in that first 40 minutes he gets an opportunity to kind of turn his life around. Because he really is snarky. He's not even very nice to his friends. He's very, you know, misogynistic. He's very full of himself. But, yeah, finding out that, you know, he's not... His company is definitely not the good guy. Yeah. And seeing people, like actual people dying because of his weapons, it... You know, it, it was enough of a spark to, you know, get the character change to happen, and it did happen. True, but is, is it gen genuine? Gen genuine? Genuine, yes. Like, because he's, he's still, still kind of an asshole, still, yeah. Is it, it's just like, oh, you're not actually sorry, but... Well, it's like, I mean... I mean <laughs> you just it, feel it's, guilty. It's, kind of. it's rebellion. I mean, he's not going to, like, completely change and stop, you know, being misogynistic entirely. He's not going to yeah. completely stop being snarky. It's just, he got woke. You know, he, he figured out, he, he realized that, you know... Yeah, but now he thinks he's the hero. He thinks he's the hero. And, you know, it, it, Obadiah made a really good point, which is that even though Tony was making the Iron Man suit, making the small version of the arc reactor to power the suit, even though he was doing that to prevent more weapons from being made, yeah. he really did supply the world with more weapons. More by information. Yeah, because, I mean, any deterrence is going to be a weapon in their own hands, so... It, um, yeah, I mean, all, for, all in all, for Marvel's first, you know, big, you know, tentpole for the lead-up to the Avengers, it was a really solid movie. I mean, it was a huge, it really set up, it started I believe genre. it set up the, not only the Avengers, but also the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I hear a lot of people like. I ha I've only seen, like, five episodes of it, and I liked what I saw, but yeah. I was too busy to, like, continue watching. We had to see Agent Coulson for the ver first time, maybe? Agent Coulson? Yes. I think it was the first time we saw him, like, in the entire series. Yeah. I, I don't know. He was cool, the though. timeline. Yeah, he he's funny. a funny guy. I've worked with him. He's really nice. He's a person, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, he was really cool. It was nice to see everything kind of come together in the movie. It was... Like I said, they had good moments of drama, a lot of comedy with Tony Lots being so funny. The robot was probably your favorite character. His yeah. robot buddy, oh, the arm yeah. that sprays him with the fire extinguisher in his warehouse whenever, he's, whenever <laughs> yeah. he catches on fire. Zach was like, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> She'd be... And the, you're, he's Tony. He was like... You're Tony. Don't spray me. Well, you told me that I'm Pepper and you're Tony. Because you were... Because you wait, can't wait, remember, wait. You can't remember anything... It? She's like, what is your social security number? And he couldn't remember it. Oh, uh, you don't even know my social security No, I don't know your though. social, but I could probably, you know. Pepper, Pepper runs Tony's <laughs> jog, life. Jog my memory. <laughs> yeah, I probably could remind, even though today I forgot my chiropractor appointment. So yeah. I guess none of us are Pepper. No one here remembers. I, I think it's just you're Tony and, I, and I'm the robot that sprays you. <laughs> <laughs> even when you're not on fire. Pepper and Tony are probably going to have a romance. Maybe. We'll see. There, there was a romance there. There was some. They, they almost kissed. It was funny though. Like I, because we know there's more movies. I was like Pep when Pepper was running from the attack. I was like Pepper, run, run to the second movie. Yeah, get away from Obadiah. You know he's if he dies in this, he's not in the series anymore. And Jeff didn't. He, Jeff never made it back to Iron Man two or three. Yeah. He died, but he probably had other things to do. I think Jeff Bridges went on to do a lot. You know, actually. No, I, I was going to say, it was Jeff Bridges, Thor's... No, not Thor. Chris Pratt's dad and Guardians, but that wasn't Jeff... Th those the two guys are always mixed up. There's uh, Jeff Bridges, yeah, yeah. and then there's... I can't remember his name. He was in Hateful Eight. He was in a million things. You're, you're asking the wrong person when it comes to names. Oh, Lizzie. Poor little one. <laughs> but yeah, all in all, Iron Man 1. You know, out of 10, what do you give it? 
a solid start, so uh, I'll say nine. I'll say nine, yeah. I was thinking that don't don't say nine before I do, it makes me look like I'm just copying you. You are just copying me. <laughs> Fine, eight point five. <laughs> there you go, you can't it go It lost high. a point somehow. <laughs> it lost a point. Half a point somewhere. Yes. Well, you know, Iron Man was always my favorite one. I again it's been a long time since I've seen these movies, so as we continue to watch this, I think the next one God, I used to, I used to see, I, I was a Marvel fanboy. I was at the midnight premiere for everything. I was at the midnight premiere for what I think was Thor. Mm. Whichever one had yeah, Probably the, Captain America, too. Whichever one had the, well, yeah, I was definitely there for that one. Whichever one had the first Avengers movie trailer at the end of the, as the end credits thing, I was at that midnight premiere. Okay. Um, I was at the midnight premiere for Avengers 1. I definitely, actually, you're right. I did, I did, I was there for Captain, I was there for Thor, I was there for Avengers. I think that after that, that's when I fell off. Like I started kind of the just, slow descent. Just went if people went to see him. Yeah, I mean, superheroes are interesting. I'm more of a fantasy person, so it, it bridges the gap. I mean, Iron Man did start <laughs> the oversaturated market of the superhero genre. I mean, it's because of Iron Man and its success that we have so many Marvel movies and so many like in DC you had to put out as much as it could, and then. It, you know, switch things out after Christian Bale and Nolan left, but... Uh, mm. They will be missed. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Man For Batman. was a really good movie. It started maybe an ugly trend in movies where everything has to be superhero-based. Or a lot of things have to be superhero-based. A lot of the things that people consider popular and, you know, everyone knows are superhero I mean, it, movies. It was like... It's, it's, a, it's a genre now. Everything goes through a phase. There was one point fairies were in, then it was zombies, I think. And when then did I miss the fairy Werewolves. Trend? When were fairies in? Fairies are always in. I'll take that back. Fairies are always in. Always in. Um, was it, wait, wait, I think it was vampires, then werewolves, and then zombies. But, Mar but Iron Man and Marvel. <laughs> and then heroes. Iron Man and Marvel probably, they, they were the ones that started the idea of the universe. Mm. Of the movie universe, where you have to have... You know, well, one movie leading to the next movie, leading to the next movie, and then they all lead into one big movie. Luckily, thank you, thank you, Marvel, thank you, Iron Man One, for giving us the Dark Universe. What an amazing, <laughs> amazing universe! Yeah, I think out of all the, the darkest time, time was. no, the Dark Universe. Remember the Dark Universe? It's been canceled now. The Dark mm -hmm. Universe was going to be the Mummy movie, oh. mixed with uh, a werewolf movie, mixed and with the the Frankenstein and Mrs. Frankenstein. And it was going to have um, Johnny Depp as the Invisible Man. It was going to have Tom Cruise as the Why Mummy. Why would you have killer. Johnny Depp as the Invisible Man? He's getting old. He's probably not, you know... We like his voice now. We don't like how he looks. He looks like a leather puppet. Still, I think people still see the old him a little bit. They're when like, you squint. When you squint, like, you see the oh, old Johnny. Yeah, he's still dreamy. He still looks, <laughs> he still looks pretty good. But, yeah, we were going to have Tom Cruise. We are going to have... Um, Angelina Jolie was going to play... Mrs. Frankenstein. That's not Mrs. Bride of Frankenstein. She was going to play Bride of Frankenstein. And what's his name? Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I think it was Javier Bardem was going to play <laughs> Frankenstein. And he's got the face for it. But Javier Bardem is the guy that, um, No Country for Old Men. He's the crazy one. Mm. Um, Anton something. I'll, I'll try to remember it later. We'll watch that one and do a discussion <laughs> about that eventually. But, yeah, um, The Dark Universe got canceled because the mummy did really badly and you know which is sad all the, all the stars started dropping off actually there's a really funny story with the dark universe like the whole dark universe thing I know we're getting off track here but yeah. the whole dark universe thing is really sad because the studio and all these actors were like so like gung ho to get this thing going so gung ho that when they announced the actors that were going to be starring in each of the separate movies yeah. they couldn't even get the act like they couldn't wait to get the actors to take a picture in the same room to like show the united you know front of these are the actors this is the star power behind Star. so Dark they Universe. photoshopped they them, photoshopped right? <laughs> all the stars johnny depp angelina jolie um i think it was javier wait how do you photoshop an invisible man you just well they didn't kinda... they weren't in character they were in you know armani oh, suits and... okay okay all right but yeah Sorry. because of marvel's universe and because of you know the success we got the dark universe we got the godzilla universe or the monster universe whatever it's gonna be called where It'll King Kong's happen. gonna fight Godzilla. No, darn, it's in the works. It's oh, already okay. happening. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind a Jumanji universe, but that's not gonna happen. I feel like there might be a board I'm game. Just a world. Ooh, where a board, board game games. universe. Yeah, the Monopoly <laughs> movie leads into the Jumanji movie. 
Which leads into... There's sorry? life, or there's sorry, or there's exploding kittens. <laughs> Come exploding. on, we're, we're... Movies, we're giving you ideas. This is literally how a boardroom <laughs> in Hollywood works right now. <laughs> what can we... How can we make a universe? What a food universe? Like, there's the banana movie, and then there's, like, the carrot movie. And then it all I leads into the kitchen. I think they're trying to take that with the, um... What was that awful movie? Sausage, Sausage Party. Fest. Sausage Party. Sausage Party. And then they had a universe where they went out of like, their universe and were like... Oh, you eat us. Well, because of this, because movies like this, <laughs> we got universes, we got Iron I Man. like it. I love connections. I love, um, my favorite... Cohesion. ...books are series with just tons of different manga continues and stuff. You know, just a bunch of branches and, and honestly, of story. This bled over into everything, because even you have, like, The Walking Dead and Fear of the Walking Dead, and then they had to have the crossover. Oh, and then you didn't see the, like cold cases of The Walking Dead. They were like online little snippets where they showed um, some of the zombies from The Walking Dead. Oh, oh sorry. Walkers. Walkers. No, I remember. I remember um, what you're talking about. They showed how they got... How they got their zombie... That's more of like a internet... It was Internet cute. kind of videos. Like internet like marketing videos to That's get you to come to our website. True. It's it not really. Cute. It's not really universes. We're talking about universes that Marvel spawned. Oh, okay. Any movie like DC has well, with their DC universe. Is it Marvel's fault? Do we know that for sure? Yes. I mean, you, you tell us. But. Is it Marvel's fault that we have universe movies and that <laughs> very few big movies can stand alone? Hmm. I think it's Marvel's fault, for better or worse. I mean, you got, you got some good ones, but you definitely have, you know, a lack of creativity when everything has to connect into everything else. I mean, I think there's sometimes you can be smart about how you connect things. Let's be real. I mean, as, as great as these movies are and as great as all these universes are, we'll actually, we'll, we won't talk about the other universes, but Marvel, they're yes. just retelling the stories that were already in the comics years ago. Yeah, but like, I mean, people liked the younger generation prefer maybe, I mean, people prefer usually watching instead of reading for some reason. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's superheroes because you have all the epic fights and it's really hard for some it's artists. It's like the same argument for like manga and stuff and comics. Like, they're always better the way they were written. They're always, well, the first form's almost always better. If you can think of anything, any manga or comic book well, that was ever better that. <laughs> than the movie, or it wasn't better than the movie, let me know. Because I think that... Yeah, but then they're trying that with, um... You know, they're trying that with real books, and they're failing, like Mrs. Peregrine's, The Wrinkle in Time. No, but that, that, that just continues to There's push so my point, which is that... The book's better? Movies need to think independently. But then again, you got, you got some movies like There Will Be Blood, which was based on the book. That was Oil, really good. Oil and that, you know. So, it just, it, I guess it comes down to who's making the shit. You know, if you have a creative person that's willing to... Well, yeah. You know, no. I mean, you know, there's so many things that get filmed and not, like, get taken out. I mean, I guess for people that have been into comics prior to all this, like, this is kind of just... You're seeing it all in live action, but I guess... I mean, they're doing that with Disney movies, too. And I think that might, that might have been when I started to lose interest in the Avengers, because I had seen... I think it was Avengers, Defenders of Earth. There was some cartoon that came out about Avengers... Mm -hmm. um, around the same time that Iron Man and Captain America and Thor were starting to come out. Yeah. And that cartoon featured Hawkeye, Ant-Man, um, Wasp. It had Guardians of the Galaxy in there. Hmm. So I saw that like 10 years before all this. Like, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy. So I that's why you're not as excited. I guess because yeah, because well, I've seen it all before and I've heard all the stories and like you know they were gonna change them to a degree here, but like I don't know. I'm just you know what killed it probably was seeing um, their interpretation of uh, Cyborg. That, um, that's DC him. Oh, that's DC. Yeah. Well, then whoever DC just ruined Marvel's <laughs> legacy. Okay. <laughs> You confuse me sometimes. Oh, uh, I mean, like, just the interpretations of different characters yeah, from a from comic the, book. Just look at Fantastic Four. For, forgive my... Does um, anyone remember Fantastic Four, the one that came I out a couple years ago? The one with Michael B. Jordan as the Human Torch, and um, we'll watch it. Miles Teller played Mr. Fantastic. Is it the one that actually had Korean music in it? 
because I liked that I part. No. <laughs> I, I never... S- we'll watch it. We'll I, watch it. That's the we'll only part of the movie I actually saw, to be honest, somehow. I just was like, oh, why is there Korean Actually, Fantastic Four <laughs> technically is... Well, no, it's not a Marvel... It, when it, it came out when a different company owned the property. So it's not a Marvel movie. We, we well, it's like it. Spider-Man now belongs to Marvel, and... I mean, oh, not Amazing Spider-Man. What is the new Spider-Man? Uh... Whatever, Spider-Man. I think it's just Spider-Man. He's not amazing. He's not fantastic. Spider-Man Homecoming? I was, yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming is the one that Marvel owns. They own the suit, not the actual there's, there's amazing Spider-Man. from Spider. There's Amazing Spider-Man, Fantastic Spider-Man, Yeah. Spectacular Spider-Man, and then there's also Homecoming Spider-Man. <laughs> I think it's Tobey Maguire. Yeah, yeah. What about Tobey Maguire played the first Spider-Man. That was the best Spider-Man. Yes, but unfortunately we'll not be watching that leading up to this. But we'll watch the, all the Spider-Man movies leading up to Spider-Man 2 that Marvel's going to make. Oh, it's it's okay. Spider-Man. It's okay. That was my favorite one. I had a Spider-Man blanket. It was supposed to be my brother's, but it was comfy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've gotten so far off topic. It's yeah, sorry minutes. about that. Okay. Iron Man 1 is a great movie. The cops are coming, so we should probably go. <laughs> Find a new location. Find a new location. We'll see if if we get out of jail soon enough, we'll watch Captain America next. But why would we be going to jail? I don't know. They found out we were playing the other day. What were we playing? Oh, what we were... How old is Sue and Love Hina? Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> they, they found out what we were reading. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Love Hina, you've gotten this. Lizzie and Zach versus the police. No. Yes, I'm gonna make it a thing. No. <laughs> You're just stealing from super best friends. What? No, that's not versus. Not versus. Wait, super no. best friends. No. Featuring don't do the police. Featuring the police. You stole it. Did I steal it? Yes. Damn. He's no. sorry. Everyone steals. You're out of focus, by the way. Oops, sorry. How do you I? You got too far forward. Okay, we got it. We so got it. We got to end this video. All right. <laughs> All right. Iron Man one. It was fun. <laughs> Ready for Iron Man 2, but not yet. I think it's Captain America next. So, look out for that video. End of the Road to Infinity Wars. Yes. Say, Road to Infinity Wars. Road to Infinity Wars. It had to be mysterious. (laughs) It was very mysterious. (laughs)